good evening. We apologize for a bit of a delay, uh, but now everything is set. We're going to be recorded and heard um, out loud. Um, very welcome to today's roundtable or debate um, that somehow starts also the international conference uh, that has the title Understanding Causes and Consequences of Criminalization of Migration Organized uh, of Migration. And the conference is organized by the Peace Institute, Institute of Criminology at the Faculty of Law Ljubljana, International Law Association for Slovenia, and uh, CNED, so Criminigration Control International Net of Studies. And the conference will take place tomorrow and on Friday. Um, it's a great pleasure um, that I can tonight uh, welcome next to me um, two guests. Mojca Pajnik, a researcher uh, from the University of Ljubljana, author of many studies, and uh, she has also been focusing on the development of migration law, but also how media reports uh, and what effects uh, it has on the so wider society. And uh, next to me, Cesar Garcia Fernandez. Okay, did some practice with that. Um, hopefully it went well. Uh, he's a scholar of migration from the University of Denver. He's also the author of the book, Crimigration Law, and has been now in Slovenia for five months, uh, also preparing somehow his next book. Um, he has also been writing um, on the webpage crimigration.com for some time and is quoted in many international uh, media referenced also with The Intercept and other publications. Um, today we will talk about the book that we have had for quite some time or also in Slovenian translation and it's a book that somehow couldn't come at a better time um, it's titled uh, Violent Borders, uh, the Refugees and the Right to Movement uh, by Rhys Jones. Um, it can be bought uh, today uh, with, on special offer with 20% of discount. Uh, and the bookshop will be open for 15 minutes after we finish our conversation. Um, so these are somehow the technical and less technical issues. Um, so the book talks about uh, somehow how the borders have become more and more violent. And this is not just something that we can theor theorize about, but we can also see in everyday praxis. Um, both of you have been researching and writing about these topics. And I would be interested to hear what do you see is the main value of the book that very clearly and precisely and timely uh, shows somehow the development and also the growth of borders? Although we imagine that we live in this globalized, nice village uh, from our privileged somehow point of view. Um, so I'll just yeah, let you somehow first gather your thoughts about um, what's the starting point we have, and that's extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, thank you, Christina. Thanks for, um, uh -huh, for the colleagues for the invitation. Uh, yes, um, when I was uh, gathering my thoughts also for the forward to the Slovenian um, translation, what I found um, fascinating about the book, the first thing is the concept of violent border uh, itself. Um, and uh, the author, I think, by, uh, you know, by pur purposefully um, naming borders, borders or delineating borders together um, with the concept of violence is something um, unique for the, uh, for the book. Um, uh, in a way, the author uh, adopts uh, the definition of the state as a violent state. So borders, he in a way equalizes um, violence of the state with, 
with violence of the, of the border. So the state has been itself turning into a violent, uh, a violent uh, state. Um, uh, on the one hand, I mean, uh, you know, I was at first uh, puzzled with this, uh, with this uh, approach, but um, what I find very convincing um, is that uh, the author is actually um, analyzing the violent, violent state as violent bordered state uh, based on um, very concrete examples uh, violent borders have on concrete people. So um, the book is not only uh, interesting uh, theoretically, conceptually, but it uh, combines, I think, very well, very vividly, very illustratively, uh, the, the effects on concrete people. So the book is, um, is an account, I think, of global bordering. So there are stories of uh, youngsters trying to get um, uh, in a compartment of a bus, uh, so crossing the border to come from uh, Morocco to, uh, to Spain. There are stories of um, youngsters being shot um, in San Diego at the border with uh, so Mexico and US. There are uh, stories of uh, people um, that don't make it uh, through the Mediterranean to Lampedusa. Uh, uh, there are concrete stories of uh, um, uh, families um, separated and killed at the border between Israel and Palestine, um, Bangladesh and India, and, and so on. So, um, well, reading the book, one really gets this, you know, what violence in, in terms of uh, bordering um, means in, uh, uh, in terms of the effect, the concrete real life effects it has on people. And, and, and I, I think this is, um, this is the convincing part uh, in making the analogy between the, the violence and, uh, and uh, the state. So um, the, uh, what I found also interesting is that um, in a way the, the author convincingly shows how the pact of of bordering, the pact of violent borders, together with um, crimigration, so together with uh, criminalizing uh, migration laws, um, affects exclusion or how it produces exploitation at the, at the global scale. So uh, it's a, I think it's a very good overview of uh, contemporary global uh, bordering and the, the effects on people, but uh, as I said, I also found uh, conceptually uh, the author positions uh, himself um, distinctively in the studies of borders, in studies of migration, precisely by this uh, coining uh, this concept of uh, violent borders in a way uh, pointing to the metamorphosis between the state and um, between the state and violence in uh, when it comes to when it comes to migration. Thank you, thank you for, for um, getting us started, Cristina, and thank you all for, for joining us and for having me. I fear that the reason that we may be discussing, having this conversation in English is, is, is my fault, and I apologize for that. Um, despite having been here five months, my ability to, to navigate Slovene is, um, is, is woefully behind um, where it should be. Um, but I, so, so let me apologize for, for that, but thank you all for the opportunity to, to discuss a book that, um, that uh, I have been a fan of for, for several years since it came out in, in the U.S. and um, I've been using it in my research but also in my, in my classes at the University of Denver um, since, since I think I, I, I read it um, soon after, after it was issued. Um, uh, thinking about uh, the, the value of uh, Reese's, Reese Jones's uh, violent borders um, in, in the context of um, 2018, in the context of a, of a world that um, in many ways appears to be uh, rapidly moving backwards and not forward, um, I think for me the central contribution that this book offers is the reminder that one of the few things um, that remains borderless today is border policing. That is that border policing has no borders itself. It has bled into every corner of the world. It bleeds um, away from the international boundaries 
boundary lines, the geopolitical lines that consist of rivers in some places, consist of uh, barbed wire or steel and concrete fences as they do in, in my native South Texas, um, and, and, and runs um, uh, into communities uh, that are in the interior of countries, whether it's in the United States, um, whether it's here in Slovenia, um, whether it's within, um, what it, it, they bleed far outside of, of, of countries, whether it's the example of Australia, um, and then it's rampant use of offshore detention centers and in, in, in wholly di uh, distinct uh, sovereignties. Um, so the, the notion that, that, that border policing somehow even loosely follows borders um, is, is, uh, is, 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 is simply quaint. Um, it, it's a, it's, it is, uh, at this point, I think, uh, mis misleading, and, and, and Reese, Reese Jones' uh, Violent Borders um, uh, uh, sheds a, a rather um, uh, harsh uh, view of, of, of the idea that there is some kind of geo geographic limitation to that kind of uh, policing. Um, his, 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 uh, the, the, the second uh, major contribution that I think this, this book um, brings to the table and the reason why it remains so timely um, is because he centers, he, he, he doesn't shy away from centering politics, the politics of migration. He rather, he, he, he rather uh, courageously um, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, contextualizes um, the, the violence of borders um, as being a feature of the politi politicization of borders, that is the political nature of borders, um, and, 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 and in fact goes one step further in the very uh, last pages of, of the book, um, he, he courageously calls for reimagining the very politics of migration. Um, the very politics of border of of of, of the uh, of the of the policing of uh, the borders of sovereign uh, sovereign states um, and questions whether or not, not well it doesn't question but but actually um, um, uh, recommends to those of us who engage in this um, and, and and theorizing or litigating or advocating in other ways about borders um, he he encourages us to be as radically courageous about reimagining the future of border policing as past generations have been um, that have led us to the current um, uh, rather retrograde um, uh, form of border policing um, that currently exists. Now, if you mention imaginative, um, it seems that imagination mostly goes in the other direction of more violence, of more controls. And also the global, let's call them inspirations with um, quotation marks, seem to be numerous, but they don't seem to be positive in the, word, in the terms of enhancing uh, freedom of movement and freedom of people, but they seem to be um, inspiration of how to somehow deterritorize, so to make it in a different territory where you keep the migrants as the others very clearly and then also um, you know, drop by drop letting them inside. And it's interesting because from Australia they say, well, you know, the way how we treat migrants now uh, in Papua Nui, New Guinea, or closing the, some of the centers, is the inspiration was Guantanamo. Um, and what we hear now with building of the border on the US-Mexico um, border, so building the wall, it's not something new. It has been happening for really long time. We are shocked as we see borders coming up or that they came up two years ago um, in Slovenia or in Macedonia. Uh, this seemed, as you said before, quaint, uh, a very old idea, but it's becoming modern again. And I'm wondering, I mean, how do you see, so my question at the end is, where, where do you see the interesting inspirations? How do they go? Are they like, you know, is it clear? Because we were always somehow, you know, America was the model for some time, or West was the model. Is, is that the same way, or is now changing? Because it seems that Orban has been the role model for, you know, um, entrenching the borders in Europe. Right. Yeah, well, I, I, or, or, or Orban is, is 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 certainly. I think I think that that, that is a good way of characterizing him. Um, um, we we have our own form, obviously, right? And Donald and Donald Trump, to uh, just over 
I guess it was June of 2015, I recall very vividly sitting in a, in a radio booth being interviewed by some, some uh, radio journalists and, and being asked um, whether, whether um, uh, what I thought of Donald Trump. And I said, look, I think it's important not to take seriously somebody who's a ridiculous candidate. Um, and 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 while 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 um, I stand by my characterization of Donald Trump as ridiculous, um, I also I also acknowledge that he is the president of the United States. Um, and so 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 the notion that that something that is an outlandish idea that is fantasy that is re that, that is easy to ridicule um, and in the present day um, cannot become reality is obviously wrong. Um, but, uh, what what seems outlandish today can become reality tomorrow. And I think. Um, I think there has to be some uh, uh, um, some some value in learning learning the lesson that is Donald Trump's rise rise to power, um, and, and and which is which is as, as very much as as as, as Reese Jones uh, suggests that we do. We have the courage um, to break away from the kinds of narrow myopic. Um, um, engagements with with migration policy and border policing policies that take as given that take as somehow um, um, necessary the idea that we have to have police of one sort or, or another um, standing guard along international boundaries um, for fear that the state will come crumbling down if we do not. Right? The entire history of, 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 of most of the history of the United States suggests that the United States can function quite well um, without having 20,000 border patrol officers and an additional 20,000 immigration and customs enforcement officers. Um, and, and we can, we, we, certainly I, I, I know the, 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 the U.S. context much better, but this is not unique to any any particular country. We can we, we can turn to Australia as, as well and see that the Australian state, um, for most of its history, has been doing um, very well for itself without the need to resort to offshore detention centers in Papua New Guinea or, or, or elsewhere. And so I think the inspiration, the answer to your question about where do we look for inspiration, we can look for inspiration in, in many ways um, in, in the past. Um, but we also look in, in, in the history of these various nation states that have um, imperfectly, uh, quite imperfectly in many ways, um, um, evolved into functioning um, democracies without uh, the need to, to rely as heavily on, on, on violent borders um, as we do today. And we'll come back, I think, to that because it's uh, probably the, the main question of how. Um, but I would like to also focus a little bit before it was mentioning also somehow how borders turn into the inside. And just before we, there was a mention or today um, to human beings, uh, one from Nigeria and one from Gambia, um, as far as we know, have been taken to Vienna for the deportation. Um, so the criminalization um, is happening also inside the countries. Um, the borders are invisible, but they very clearly um, exist for many people, whether they put them in prison or detention centers or in other ways for different reasons, whether they're economical or other. Um, how do you see that developing, or you know, what's the framework that can be used also for understanding the situation in Slovenia and in Europe today, where you know, detention centers seem to be, um, well, um, mm. be, yeah, becoming more and more normal, and there are more and more of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yes, I, I think um, uh, I'm going back to, to the book and relating uh, what uh, the content of the book is to, to your question. I think the author. Uh, also ni nicely puts, uh, I mean, uh, tries to understand borders as means, means of violence that has, that can have really many faces and, um, uh, and uh, w we see how these means has been used very, very differently. So from um, strengthening, building uh, physical walls, from um, strengthening uh, in, uh, in the context of the development of information and communication technologies, so strengthening also this IT Frontex uh, you, you were discussing before the 
the, um, the border, the, the, the police guards, physically but also electronically. Um, uh, we, uh, so uh, we are strengthening the, um, the land borders where we are, I mean, Frontex is also looking at um, uh, the sea borders, uh, so, so border strengthening as one, uh, as one strategy. Another is what you mentioned is building camps, so is literally incarcerating uh, people. And um, if we see the numbers in the last uh, four years, um, the number of camps has been growing globally uh, in European context uh, as well. Uh, another means, uh, so there are several means. This is, this is uh, how I think bordering has been uh, reproduced. Another means is through uh, citizenship. That's one chapter also in the book about citizenship regimes. So how, um, how we have enthroned passport citizenship, so privileging nation state, uh, Western nation state identities, and how this, uh, this um, has been having um, exclusionary consequences, so the, the, the classical we, them discourse and, um, and so on. So um, another, uh, there, there are many other strategies. Another strategy is, for example, um, the, um, uh, the intrastate agreements that uh, have been uh, part of the migration management strategy uh, intensively in the last um, two decades, starting from several agreements the European Union made um, uh, in the 2000s onwards with uh, several uh, countries in Africa, uh, ending with the uh, latest agreement in 2016 uh, of, of the European Union with, uh, with Germany, which is a way of externalizing borders. So With we Turkey, are not. Right? Uh, Turkey or France? We, uh, Turkey, 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 sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so we are external, by these, agree these agreements have been um, introduced, I think, as, a, as another means of bordering um, that has been also deepening um, the divisions between the global north and the, the global uh, south, has been deepening. Um, the, the divides between you know, the creditor states, the debt states, and, uh, and has been a means to externalize uh, um, uh, the borders. So you see this, this uh, I think um, wh what is inherent in borders is also this permeability. So this, um, this uh, being able to adapt to very different situations, um, but having, uh, uh, having also been very pragmatic. So there are, you know, when, when the movement of capital, then we are debordered. Once we are speaking about the movement of people, then we are rebordering. So this um, uh, ability of being very plastic, I think it's inherent in, uh, in contemporary bordering. So once you open the border because of, of the interest and then, you know, and then you, you close it. So we are seeing a lot of this, um, uh, yeah, a lot of this, uh, bordering and rebordering dialectics. And can you just uh, continue a little bit, because what you mentioned also, and I think it's opened a bit in the book, when it comes to citizenship, um, there is an, another book coming, I think the end of nation states, something like, or the demise of nation states. Um, I won't know how to cite it correctly, but basically the main um, idea of the author is also that citizenship is something that even the poorest um, citizens have. Mm. And it's something that's very easily, uh, that can be very easily manipulated mm. as a tool to present others as a threat, also in the societies where inequalities mm. grow. Mm. Um, so it can be used as you know, the privilege that others are threatening um, to take away or... Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, do you see this also being used in the today's political mm. discussions mm. or... Um, just you know how politics is talked about, or how nationalism is built on, mm. um, and how populism terms. Have mm. we come to that step already? Mm. Um, or yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yes. Um, I mean, citizenship in uh, <coughs> has uh, the same as borders. I think you know has been um, functioning historically uh, as a means to. To exclude, to um, to exclude, to bound, uh, to uh, also impose 
to impose identity, uh, but it can also be viewed as in uh, Jones's in the in the last chapters of the book, where he speaks of um, migrants as a political movement, uh, as a way of um, re-citizenizing citizenship, if if you want, you know, so giving, um, trying to imagine citizenship, you know, as a utopian um, way of. Uh, Reimagining states, reimagining nation states, reimagining, uh, reimagining borders, um, moving towards, you know, thinking the unthinkable, as he also um, uh, puts it in in the sense of, you know, e principles of equality, solidarity, and 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 so on. Um, but yes, uh, uh, so this is the aspirational part of, you know, of of, of citizenship, of debordering. But the very material um, consequences of uh, how citizenship how citizenship is granted selectively uh, can, for example, be uh, viewed in another means of bordering, that is uh, the, co the categorization of people based on which migration legislation uh, is actually has been funded uh, upon. So um, migration laws are. Uh, are you know I, are built on categorizing you know so it's so this humanity human being is lost in in this uh, legal migration um, discourse people become economic migrants they become refugees they become asylum seekers they become family reunion migrants they become illegal and and there is a you know a, a very big arsenal of this categories that are all used, again, to reproduce these borders and, and boundaries. Who fits, who doesn't fit, um, and of course, those who determine what, you know, what, uh, what should fit are, in, in Jones's, uh, in Jones's uh, terms, is the, are these holders of power uh, that are, in a way, um, uh, embodying uh, the, the, the violent state. So, uh, so I, I think, yeah, that this uh, principle of categorization based on which migration law um, is formed um, very well shows uh, how violence in bordering is, uh, is uh, reproduced. I think with that, well, that last comment makes me think of is, is, is one of the questions that runs through my mind when I, when I read um, uh, Violent Borders is, 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 is whether it's, is, is, is whether the citizen or the human being is more important. Um, and I think, I think I know the way that, 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 that Jones answers that, that, that question. I certainly um, uh, um, take his, his account to be one that suggests that we displace the citizen um, from, from the center of, uh, of, of, of the juridical framework that, the legal framework that um, Sits as um, the, the 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 way in which we um, decide who benefits and who suffers from border policing um, and all of the the, the 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 privilege the privileges of citizenship. Going back to something you said you said earlier, Christina. Um, but 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 in addition to that, um, it's a reminder. His book is a reminder to me that citizenship is not uniform. It's not, it is not a bin binary where there are citizens and then there are not citizens. Um, on the contrary, there's a spectrum of citizenship, um, even among those people that have, have, have obtained formal citizenship in a particular state, um, people lose their citizenship, people lose their formal citizenship through the processes of, 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 of denaturalization. Um, whether it was historically a woman who married um, a, a man who was not a citizen of a particular state, um, or whether it's more recent attempts to do so based on, um, on criminal activity, um, on, on association with, 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 with terrorism, um, or whether it is a wholly uh, distinct from formal citizenship and just the way in which people are able to obtain the value of their citizenship in the course of their ordinary life. We can think of the Windrush generation um, that, that, that many of you may have, have been reading about in recent weeks in the UK, um, who, where The Guardian just published a, a, an expose a few weeks ago about um, the efforts by, um, by the Home Office in the United Kingdom to detain and deport 
uh, people who have been living and in, 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 in citizens of the United Kingdom uh, going back to, to the early 1970s. In the US, we have no shortage of examples of United States citizens um, who are detained and deported. Um, and, 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 and the question isn't, are these people, uh, oftentimes the question isn't simply, are these people uh, citizens or not, um, but why is it, a uh, more important question is, why is it that, 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 that uh, government officials decided that these individuals are not citizens? Um, and it's generally hard to, dis to answer that question without looking at the racial and the class composition of the people who are being targeted. And what's the aim of that? To actually, I mean, is that, are they real when they talk about, you know, cl clear ethno-white uh, nations? I mean, do they really, do you feel that this is really somehow behind this whole process, nicely described here as well, that we believe in, you know, racially or colorfully clean groups of people? It's a, it's a, the underlying um, uh, um, reason for this is, isn't, isn't I, I won't go so far as to say um, that there is a conscious aim to racially purify um, a, 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 a country, but there is um, a, a, a pattern of viewing people who are who do not fit the dominant uh, uh, racial uh, um, uh, who do not, not fit within the right, dominant racial cl classification of a particular country to be viewed skeptically, to be viewed suspiciously, to be viewed as somehow not worthy of the citizenship that they somehow obtained, right? and because they're viewed skeptically, because we are viewed skeptically. Um, then it becomes that much easier to, to detain and deport even when there are indications that this person should not rightfully be in that situation. So I'll give you an example from, from, from the U.S. of one gentleman who was uh, convicted of a drug, drug uh, uh, crime. He served his time in prison. And as he was finishing his, his prison sentence, he, was hand, he thought he was gonna get released and go back to the New York area where he, was, he, he lived. Um, and instead, he's handed over to the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agencies, the Interior Border Policing, the Interior Immigration Policing Agency in the US. And he says, look, I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen. I've been, I was born in Jamaica, but I'm actually a U.S. citizen because uh, my, my mother or my father, I forget, one of, the, one of his parents became a U.S. citizen when I was young, and so I've, I've been a U.S. citizen for, for like 15 years. Um, they don't believe him. So they put him inside a, an immigration detention center, and he keeps arguing, keeps saying, I'm a U.S. citizen, I'm a U.S. citizen, call my mother, call my father, here are their, their, their names, here are their phone numbers. And the immigration officials call the wrong number. And they talk to somebody with a different name, and they decide, oh, look, I talked to them, and they said they never heard of you. Well, they had never heard of them. They called the wrong number, and they didn't bother to check that it was the wrong name and the wrong number. Right? And so this guy stays in there, and he stays in there for over a thousand days, for three years, till finally he's able to convince a judge that he is in fact a U.S. citizen, like he'd been saying all along. Right? Do I think that would have happened if he was a white Canadian? I've never seen that happen to a white Canadian. Do I think that would have happened to a white Brit? I don't. We don't see those examples. Right? We have a population of half a million people inside immigration detention centers every si single year. It's not, a, it's not a problem of a small sample size. Right? It's that that, that, that kind of uh, discriminatory treatment doesn't arise. Yeah, just, just to follow on this, um, I think here um, Jones's book is um, interesting uh, because he speaks of the structural violence of borders. You know? So it's, um, it's again uh, this fusion of the, the state and its institutions um, with uh, 
r racism. So he's also speaking, you know, implicit, uh, implicitly about uh, what could be called institutionalized racism. So borders, boundaries, um, at the individual, at the individual level, you know, it's something uh, different. It's something that we are distinctions that we are making in everyday uh, life to avoid fusion, to avoid disappearance. But some, some, another thing is, you know, this policing and this militarization of, um, of the border uh, regime that has, um, that is racialized actually. So just, just to add to the, you know, to the, uh, to the border as uh, not only being a means of violence, but also being uh, very racialized, very gendered uh, uh, mean of, uh, of uh, separating, of, of dividing. So um, here I think uh, borders actually um, uh, point to a rac rac uh, racial structure of, of the racist structure of the institutions. No? For example, Etienne Balibar speaks about this in the uh, violence and civility, you know, in the book where, where he pinpoints precisely this fusion uh, uh, of, of racism, of exclusionary regime, and, uh, and the institutions of the state. You know? So it's not about individual prejudice. It's not about that individuals you know, uh, fear um, the other, fear the, the immigrant, but it's, um, it's the structural, this racism is structurally produced and reproduced. And this is why I think the, holders of power should be um, held accountable for, for this reproduction of bordering and um, racialization. Yeah. I think in this, sorry, go ahead. Okay. In, the, in, in, there's one, in, in one important respect, the conversation is now shifting in a way that mirrors the, the, the way in which Jones actually structures the book. He begins with a very, very specific example of, 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 of violence happening along one, one international boundary, one border. But then he turns to a much more, um, m a much more uh, uh, ideological inquiry, mm. and he ends with a much more ideological inquiry. And I think our conversation is now leading to, is, 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 is leading away from the reality that borders are identifiable locations on the Earth's surface, and to what I think is an equally important conversation about the, the uh, borders as ideology. Right? So just as borders are concrete walls and steel wires and fluid rivers, they're also, they're also uh, a set of norms, they're also a set of visions of the way that the world ought to operate, um, and they're also ways about dividing up power, who benefits from those power uh, differentiations and who loses in that, in that, in that, in, in, in that power, whether it's people or capital, as you were saying earlier. And I think, so I think, I think when we're talking about the violence of borders and the way that borders are inherently violent, as Jones says in the opening chapter, opening pages, we need to think not just about the locations where this happens and the way in which this hap the, the violence is, is, is actually deployed, mm -hmm. but also what, what the ideological function is of that kind of, uh, of, of easy, easy to see, easy to hear um, deployment of violence. I think that part is really um, also, I think very, it has a very practical value because he talks about how a group of students, they went together to Morocco and um, some men tried to somehow um, also get back to Spain or to Europe under the bus. And he feels almost angry, sorry? And. He, he's angry, yeah? He talks about how angry uh, he is himself with these migrants because they make their travel unpleasant, they have to stop and everything. And it seems that this is an important question also when it comes to, I, mean, I remember you know, when you talked about political um, accountability, Slovenian prime minister is very proud of how Slovenia is open to tourists and foreign investment. He doesn't like to talk about the border um, mm. barbed wire. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, realizing our privileges, 
um, how we can move around without great problems at the borders um, is extremely unpleasant. And it also makes us feel, when we think about borders as ideology, it makes us afraid. Yeah? What if it happens to us? What if we turn out to be the unlucky ones whose wrong numbers are called? Yeah? Mm. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, where do you see can somehow admitting our privileges um, open way for changing the violence of the system as it is? That's a hard one. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, just before the hard, the hard one, uh, I would just like to add, I mean, to, to what you were saying uh, before, well, where we ended the discussion with this um, borders being racialized, there is another topic, I think, that, we, that there is quite present in the book and that should be mentioned, uh, borders capturing labor. Uh, it's also um, an important uh, issue in the sense that uh, the author mentions World Trade Organization, he mentions um, trade agreements, so the TPP, the GATT, um, so uh, he's in a way showing how uh, migration control is in the function of the privileged uh, capital, so, and how also the states have been uh, capturing and how uh, the states have been turning themselves into corporations um, who are in a way capturing precarious, who are capturing um, docile uh, labor and who are uh, through controlling labor, controlling uh, mobility. So I think this is another uh, important, um, very important issue when we talk about borders not forget that they are about controlling labor. They are strongly related to managing um, labor regimes, right? So this is, and um, ju just uh, about the tough question, um, I, uh, I, I don't know where to, uh, how to uh, ad address, uh, uh, but with Jones, um, in the last part of his, his book, he's in a way speaking of this uh, reimagining um, the border. So I think this is this is our duty, uh, not to to uh, to stress that there is nothing natural, that there is nothing um, you know self-evident uh, in the borders. Uh, passports have been invented um, 200 years ago, so it's a it's a fairly new uh, phenomenon and, and, and can be changed. So um, he's in a way pleading for, um, for uh, sorry, uh, he, he's in a way pleading for this, um, looking at actually what migration movement has done uh, on its own. So we have, uh, in times of the Balkan route, we have seen borders, you know, being demolished in a way, you know, so, and this, this is done, this was done by, by people, it was not, you know, something that, uh, had any legal basis, so this can change. Citizenship laws can change if, if they would be informed from um, from the movement, right? So, uh, so I think this this would be one way of reasoning. Just uh, thinking about the utopias, thinking about what the movements themselves have been uh, doing. Um, there is a, an interesting debate in the autonomy of migration literature that talks about uh, migrants as mobile, common, uh, as um, uh, sub subjectivities that are escaping, you know, the, either the victim picture that is being imposed on them by the media or uh, escaping also the perpetrator picture that has been imposed on them by, um, by political, uh, political discourse. So seeing uh, this, uh, you know, uh, humanity of the movement and autonomy of the movement itself that, um, that had this, uh, in a way, potential to eradicate, to change, to change borders. Uh, so I think it, it comes from the movement itself, you know, so um, uh, it, it's already here, it's already there. And uh, I think also the book shows this uh, well at the end, how migrants are struggling, for example, how they are escaping the policing, how they are escaping the, um, the bordering by, I don't know, tactics such as using the media, 
um, by um, burning the fingers or putting plastic to the fingerprints to avoid being printing, avoiding uh, detention. Uh, uh, so showing us actually what should be legalized, you know, movement should be legalized and uh, without these tac tactics um, being uh, viewed as something violent, as something that, um, that has been, uh, you know, uh, posing a danger to the sovereign, to the sovereign state. I think for me this is an invitation to take seriously the very um, uh, the, the the notion of the right to move um, that uh, Jones um, includes in his analysis includes in the subtitle um, of of the of the English version at, at least um, and 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 that to me um, raises the I idea that the, 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 the reality that human mobility uh, is, is timeless, um, that it's a feature, a feature of human existence is, is, is the desire to, to um, seek opportunity and seek, or seek survival um, across the face of the earth as one was able, one is able to do so. Um, and then it's actually the border, as, as Jones said, at one point reminds us, the border that's new. Uh, it's not the movement that's new, it, the, human, the movement of humanity that's new, but the border that is suddenly a, uh, um, constructed as this um, uh, penetrable and impenetrable um, uh, location as the state wishes um, that that is that is the the, the, new, the new development, um, and 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 so what does what does this recognition of our privilege, the reality, that our, 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 the the realization that some of us are born into the privilege of a of a passport that allows that allows us to move from Denver, Colorado to Ljubljana um, for for a few months. Um, I think it's the it's 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 a reminder that entitlement doesn't does not equal deservingness. Um, that I didn't do anything to deserve my U.S. passport. I was just and my mother you, was in the right place at the right time. And aren't you a little bit afraid because of that? Because you know you're not deserve. I mean, well, I, I don't mean it like that, but I know you know you're not deserving. So you're aware that this is you know the system that makes you in a good position but puts someone else in a worse position so you try to you know, keep the system as it is because for now you're the one who's better off and you're afraid that in another system you might be yeah i think the way i interpret your your, your question christina is am i am i afraid of what of or what of yes, societies i mean the yeah, way yeah. Am I am, uh, am I, I I'm happy to personalize it. Am I am I afraid? Am I afraid of what a shift to the status quo results to to uh, in my life? Um, given how much I benefit from the current um, geopolitical alignment across the face of the planet and and my own formal formal membership in 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 the political community that is the United States, uh, of course, um, but. Sometimes fear is is appropriate, and um, and and sometimes we need to push ourselves to do things that are scary. Um, quite often, in fact, we should be pushing ourselves to do things that are scary, especially when we recognize simultaneously that the privilege of my entitlement comes at enormous cost to humanity. Um, when, 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 when my, when my privilege depends, well, when my privilege is justified, um, at the cost of the literal deaths of uncountable numbers of people whose bodies decompose in a desert, then I should be pushing myself to think hard about living in the world that is scary to me because it displaces my own privilege. Um, and I think that that's what, that's what Reese's, Reese's, Reese's call to radically reimagine borders means to me. It's the notion that it is not just appropriate, but actually imperative that we have the courage to dream big about radically reformulating 
um, the way we think of people's ability to move across the face of the earth in the first half of the 21st century. And it seems that I mean, what you have also um, mentioned a little bit, um, I'm wondering, I mean, basically my question goes, how to follow the money? And in, on one side, if we talk about the uh, um, labor market, I would be interested, I mean, how to understand, the fact is nobody knows, or we are all faced with automat automatization, yeah, nobody knows what's going to happen. The fact is that there is development and there could be imagination for a different world. At the same time, we see that illegalization of people um, who move illegally through the borders is actually, is something that economies um, like because they offer unprotected and cheap labor. Um, on the other side, borders make money or present money. Um, there is border industry, um, control laboratories, um, whether it's in Israel and Palestine or in America or someplace else. So, I mean, is that an important aspect of the today's system to understand it? I mean, yeah. Um, I'm not sure uh, the question was, sorry. <laughs> so how does, how does the, it, the, because the, we're the, always the, afraid yeah, yeah, for yeah. our, I mean, this is something also I think we hear a lot today. You know, migrants are going to take our uh, mm, mm, work mm, and mm, mm. the employment. At the same time, Europe is quite irrational uh, because we know that we might need more workforce. Mm, mm. But at the same time, we hear that, well, there is automata automatization and, you know, 70% of workforce won't be needed or something like it. It depends, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, who you mm -hmm, talk to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how to deal with this? numbers and fears and they seem to mm. be totally irrational mm -hmm. and if it's not migrants it's someone else who is mm -hmm. you know threatening our work mm -hmm. environment employment and mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. conditions but i think it's very interesting to somehow address inside the european context mm -hmm. and then, yeah mm -hmm. repose the question um, yes i mean uh, going back to the issue of border and to what you were uh, saying um, uh, to your previous question um, it's also, you know, about who is privileged and who, who is not privileged. This is also, I mean, you put it like it's something fixed, but this is also changing. Look at it in a European, uh, European context. So Europe also has its southern borders. You, know, you have um, the debtor states, you know, the, the creditors, uh, for example, if we speak of Germany, if we speak of uh, Portugal, if we speak of Greece, if, if we speak of South Italy. So, you know, th there are uh, these um, internal others also within the European uh, context. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so we are not speaking, you know, about only um, about the other as the Arab, as the Muslim who is invading, you know, the fortress Europe, but this bordering and, and constantly um, reproducing another, uh, the other has been happening within uh, European uh, borders and it actually started with, um, I would say, with the Schengen Agreement. This, is, this goes back to your, uh, to your question. So in 1985, the Schengen Agreement, it was primarily um, designed for, the, uh, for loosening the capital. So uh, movement of people, you know, across borders uh, within the European Union came later. So it was, the idea was to loosen uh, the paths for capital within the European economic, um, economic zone. And uh, you see how, how this bordering also within the European Union uh, has been following this economic pragmatism since the um, uh, 1980s onwards. Uh, just to remind you about the um, reintroduction of the borders uh, currently in seven EU, European Union states um, that just suspended the Schengen Agreement, including the neighboring Austria, because of the fear of migrants. And again, this, um, uh, this economic argument has been uh, very present in terms of you know, securing the, the economy, securing the, the local workers, and so on. And this has been happening um, in the 90s, in the 2000s, um, across Europe when 
for example, um, specific states reintroduced uh, work visas for, let's say, Eastern Europeans and so on. So this, uh, you know, it's not just that anyone is secure, that anyone is safe, you know, it's uh, this um, policing of borders and uh, what have we been seeing in the um, uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, currently the militarization of borders, not just the policing, but the militarization of borders, you know, it's, uh, no one is safe from, from that in, in, in the sense. No one is safe, but at the same time, plenty of people are, are, are profiting from the productivity of, of borders, whether it's um, the actual guards who are being paid, whether it's the politicians who are being elected because they can point to the walls and the, the barbed wire and the number of boots mm -hmm. on the ground and say, look, we're doing something, whether it's the private companies that are building the walls, whether it's the, whether it's the uh, private prison corporations that are ha uh, running the, the detention centers, uh, whether it's the, the banks that are, fund that are funding the debt that has to get taken out in order to actually construct the prison facility or to build, build the, 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 the impenetrable border um, that is always penetrable by capital, the, 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 the reality is that, 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 that borders are, um, are not just destroying things, they don't just destroy things, they actually produce, produce a lot. So when we're following the money, we have to follow it to, um, across, across borders, but also um, um, emanating from borders, beginning in, 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 in the productive um, component of borders. At the same time, I think there's a problematic nature to this conversation um, that you, you, you alluded to earlier that um, uh, migrants come to wherever because they want to work. And one of the responses is quite often, well, Europe, well, the US, well, Japan are aging societies that need migrants who are young and able-bodied and strong and they're willing to work long hours and do really poor jobs because they want to improve their, their lot in life. Uh, I was reading earlier today an article about Paris. Apparently the French bake Bakers Association every year awards uh, something for the best baguette. And the last two years it's gone to the son of Tunisian immigrants. Um, and one of the points that this article was in the New York Times was making was, was well, it's not, it shouldn't be a surprise because immigrants do these, this work that natives don't want to do. And running a boulangerie is, is long hours and it's hot and it's unpleasant and it's physical because you're using your hands and so on. And this is a, a very common, common um, uh, response from advocates for migrants. And I think it's problematic because this, is, this, this, this suggests that the reason why we welcome migrants is because migrants add economic value. Um, but the reality, the reality is that migrants are just people. And like all of us, um, sometimes we're economically productive and sometimes we're not economically productive. And yet we rarely have the conversation about excluding citizens because they are not economically productive. If we did, none of us would have children. If we did, none of us would have our aging parents. Right? If we did, none of us would be, we could, could defend, we could defend ourselves when we're too sick to work. Right? If we did, none of us would be willing to, to, to support individuals who are incapacitated mentally or physically and cannot engage in, 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 in economically productive labor. And yet we don't have those because there is a morally problematic component to having that kind of view of humanity. And yet when it comes to migrants, somehow it's okay to advocate on behalf of migrants because they add to the, to, 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 to the economic uh, productivity of, of, of a particular nation because they improve the, the, the gross dom the domestic product or because they're literally willing to scoop up the, the, the excrement from the floor and clean the toilets in our hospitals. Um, and, 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 and that takes migrants as being nothing more than workers. When in reality, migrants, yes, are workers, but more importantly, they are people. And, and, and so, so we take seriously Jones's, Jones's call to, to displace the notion of, 
of, of, of citizen as the foundational justification for policing, for defending at the, uh, through, through the state's coercive powers, the border, the international boundary line, then we also have to take seriously the, the, the analyses that reduce people to something less than people. And I think a very nice, uh, and then we'll also open the floor to questions. Um, when he, at the end, uh, talks about what, you know, somehow defines our, whether it's citizenship or, you know, human beingness or Frenchness, he says, okay, it can be roots and, you know, we can look back into history, but we can also see migration as a common ground, something I think you mentioned at the beginning. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, how afraid are you of the fact that the way uh, we treat today borders or how we understand them as crucial for our um, safety of being and who we are uh, can affect also how we treat each other, whether it's the poor, uh, the disabled. I mean, this is, you talk about this being morally unacceptable but it's politically acceptable. Um, and yeah, how dangerous is that? And can we fight, I mean, do we know how to fight it? Because I guess that's the first step also to, you know, tear down the wall. Yeah, I think, I think well, to tear down the border. Um, I, think, I, th I think it's as from, a, from, from the perspective of just the, the, the reality of, of of the current state of politics, just like the reality of the current state of the moral, the discussion about the morality of migration, um, I'm willing to grant that uh, that, that, the, that the, the 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 dominant theme is one that um, justifies, that takes as 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 necessary um, every sovereign state's ability and willingness to police a border, right? I don't think I, I, I'm not I'm not delusional. I don't think that um, that 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 my perspective is one that um, is 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 widely shared by the by by the citizenry of any country that I that I'm I, I'm aware of. Um, that doesn't mean I'm I'm going to back down. I just <laughs> that just means they think I have a lot of work to do. Um, so so read my next book. Um, but I think I, I think the the the, this, the, the notion of, of of migration as a common ground is one that is is truly um, a powerful one. It's it's the idea that we can that that we have to see in uh, ourselves the f our our own flaws um, because so long as we're willing to hold our hold ourselves out as exceptional then we're willing to expect um, that of, of, of other people. Of this, the, 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 the ex we hold others to the, to, the, um, to the exceptional state that we've never actually reached. So, so we hold um, migrants to the ex expectation that they will not commit criminal activity. And yet, none of us live in a in a, in a community with no criminal activity. I'm from the United States. We, we shoot our children in schools. How much worse does it get than that? Right? You can't send your child to a school in the United States without being afraid that your child isn't going to come home alive. And yet we are willing to deport people who have trekked across deserts, sometimes deport them to places where we're fairly confident that they're going to die soon thereafter for far less serious things than that. And we don't have the moral um, compass to do something about the violence that ravages our own families and yet we're willing to deploy some kind of moral superiority against people who are simply coming to the United States without the federal government's permission. That's the single most, the single most prosecuted type of crime in the federal courts in the United States for the last decade has been 
entering the, the crime of entering the United States without the federal government's permission. So if we're willing to, as, so long as we're willing to, 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 ima to believe the myth that we are exceptional, then we're not going to be, uh, we're, we're going to continue holding people to, to that same standard despite the fact that we don't reach it anywhere near it ourselves. Is there any comments yeah. for you? No, I'm just, um, yeah, that uh, we are, I mean, the migration and controlling migration, cremigration, bordering, shows that, uh, you know, the, the, the current governance, I think, uh, um, you know, it's something wrong with it, you know. It's, it shouldn't be, I mean, it's difficult to imagine an alternative one, but I, this is why I, I think, you know, the Jones's um, position of the utopian opening the border, it's not something that one should, you know, um, um, be mocked about being a left utopian and, and something like that, but should be taken seriously because um, obviously, uh, contemporary governance based on uh, racialized structures should not be sustainable, you know. So we, we should, um, as Jones, I think, does very well, uh, you know, think, um, think through these uh, borders. Any questions? Could it be possible to cancel passports? You, you said that this could be a, a solution uh, for mm -hmm. canceling passports. Okay, uh, uh, okay. As no, a I was yeah. No, I was just uh, making um, you know a reference to the fact that uh, passport citizenship is not something that has been here um, forever. That uh, you know, and the, uh, that ideas uh, in a way of yes, having more passports, having several, or getting even rid of of them, you know, in the, uh, as Jones has been uh, trying to imagine also these processes of transnationalization, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't know, empirically, you know, uh, <laughs> now. I, 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 I yeah. just want to make an observation about that. So uh, if I heard of, of uh, some, uh, I think it was Norwegian, uh, Nansen, he first uh, made passports for uh, refugees, I think uh, for the Imperial Russians. Mm. So why not to just close down and that, that will not be a, a problem. Administration just let go, let's go of something that uh, I think it was was important in Roman in Roman days and never more. Why not? Mm. But then, USA would not be exceptional anymore. In no way. <laughs> well, the passport only matters if 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 if, if there is some some territorial jurisdiction that has to be protected from outsiders. And, and and I think I think Jones's Jones's uh, is is um, uh, argument is is that we should question the existence of territorial jurisdictions that ought to be exclusive that ought from which some some people should be excluded. If 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 we're going to have territorial jurisdictions that are exclusive, then you have to have some way of figuring out who belongs and who doesn't belong. So it's basically talking about global or citizenship of being a human being, right? Somehow, or if you don't, I mean. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I don't keep the citizenship. Yeah, I think you can. I, I, I'm not going to put words into into his his mouth, but I think I think um, the, 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 the 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 sovereignty of of of, of jurisdictions doesn't have to doesn't have to mean that that. Um, uh, uh, borders are are fortified uh, 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 places on the on the face of the earth. It, it means that we, we can have flu fluid borders without um, having 
uh, no, uh, no, no nation states, no sovereign nation states, and I think the history of the nation states suggests that that has that we we have we have examples of of how, of how to how to do that, um, where where regulation of migration has has generally been. Um, uh, government officials turning their backs and pretending that there is no clandestine entry um, when, when in reality um, they were allowing that clandestine entry to happen uh, for the sake of, of, of obtaining necessary labor, desirable labor. One question. Do you maybe have some experience of political organization of migrants, of uh, I illegal uh, nationals in America? I'm sorry, could you repeat? Do you have some experience of political or organization, how to fight uh, situations of deportation, how to fight, uh, how, to get in, how to get out people of detention centers? Yeah, there there are lots of uh, organizations that are very um, that that vary in their tactics. Um, some are very strictly uh, legal services organizations that you know, try to wage courtroom battles, if you will. Um, and then there are much more politically um, ex explicitly politically engaged organizations um, and activists that engage in civil disobedience. Uh, people who um, tie themselves to buses that are on which um, on which on which there are migrants who are being deported. Um, people who who block the the exits from detention centers. Um, the, so um, people who are willing to um, try to in, um, affect the economic activity of. of of uh, metropolitan areas of cities in which the sen detention centers and, and, and immigration courts um, um, are located. Um, so, this, so it is something that is happening, of course. Um, there are over 200 detention centers in the US. Uh, many of them are located in very isolated parts of the United States, in very rural parts of the United States. Um, I don't think that that is coincidental at all, um, and, um, and and so what it means is that the the, the 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 deportation machinery of the United States is is vast and it's powerful, um, and that's not in any way to diminish the power of of, of civil disobedience. It's simply to say that. Um, the, federal, the United States federal government is fully committed to deporting roughly 400,000 people every year and spending t roughly $3 billion doing it. So right now they're winning. This uh, racism, xenophobia, uh, violent borders, um, structural state violence, these are all symptoms. What is the disease? I'm not sure that I, just, I agree. I, I, I think I actually, I, I would say that racism is the disease. Um, that, this, the, 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 that, that the disease, at least especially in, in, in the, again, I know the U.S. context far better. Um, and, 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 and so that's, that is my, that is my um, political and intellectual frame. Um, that the, the division of humanity um, into racial categories is one that um, is at this point, centuries into this experiment with the racialization of human beings, um, central to the way that we divide up the world and decide who's desirable and undesirable. 
Um, just because race is not biologically defensible doesn't mean it's not real. I think it is very real. Um, and it is so real that it, um, it has, we have, we are, we are now wired to, to divide the world um, into, the, divide people into categories of desirable human beings and undesirable human beings based on the phenotypical characteristics that we have defined as different racial groups. And I think at the moment that we've, we decide that we are gonna divide the world in, based on racial groups, um, then we're, we, 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 we are almost inevitably fighting to, um, to be fit into the category of those people who are privileged. Yeah, I mean, just, just to add that, uh, that the book indeed um, shows uh, the violence of structures, so it shows the violence of um, the means that the state uses to, uh, to, in a way, to suppress, to exclude. So it's not the book about, um, you know, the diseases, the values, the, the, the thinking, the... The, the problem, the intimate problems of the common man, that uh, if, I don't know if your question was alluding to that, is, I think, it's not explicit there, but it's, of course, related to, um, so, you know, it, it's related, the, the, the general feeling of people in the society is related to the structural, um, to what the, the, the political structures do, the way they behave, so this, this goes, uh, this goes hand in hand, but, um, the racial structure uh, that are analyzed uh, in the book are uh, really, I mean, uh, belong to the sphere of the political, the policing, the, the military. It's not about um, borders and boundaries, uh, you know, at the individual level. No. Can I? Uh -huh. yeah, um, is it uh, correct? I, I mean, from the book, I, I just went through the book. Mm. I didn't read it. Uh, that uh, the state structures are more violent uh, today. I mean, the, the, this is the reason why we have also those uh, secondary uh, people are, are, are more victims because, in general, we are all victims because there is more state violence. And, and this is what I meant by the disease. And, and the, the result is just that some people who, who have less rights, they, they are, they are um, more uh, victims. And uh, the, uh, there is no problem with the movement for, for rich people and for capital. Only poor po people are, are stopped at the borders. So th this is a disease. Okay. I would, a little bit, I mean, just to point out an analogy that to me also, I mean, came through the book, but I don't know how much I put it in it. Um, but it seems what was mentioned before, you know, we, we hear a lot about racism or, you know, we don't hear about it, but we hear it, so the racist views inside political speech. When we look at praxis, yeah, I mean, we don't really see it if someone has money. So you know, it's not a problem to move to London and buy house there if you have enough money. Um, and it seems that borders and especially the militarization of borders works the same. So it offers this spectacle, something that we can see or um, hear about. And it is at the same time also there, but um, the walls or the borders also then exist inside the society. So it's just like a front, yeah? So also racism, it seems it, it does come to a certain point, but then again, it's, it depends more whether you what you've said before um, about the case of the man who was incarcerated for mm -hmm. um, over 100 years, it wouldn't have happened to him if he was rich. 
Yeah, I, I, so I think that, that in, in many ways that that, 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 that that class does allow people who are racialized as non-white to, to avoid the worst mm -hmm. of the discrimination. I don't think it always happens. Um, so recently, a woman, an African American woman, who's a student, who is a student at Yale University, uh, was the, the 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 university police um, showed up and questioned her. There were like seven police officers with their with their uh, uh, um, uh, trying to arrest her. Um, why? Because she was studying so much that she fell asleep in the room where she was studying. So they decided that somebody decided that she did not belong there. She's actually a graduate student at Yale. Um, uh, recently, some, some uh, black men were sitting inside of a Starbucks coffee shop waiting for a friend to arrive, and the manager of the Starbucks called the police to arrest them and have them thrown out because they were trespassing. Um, recently, minister? what's that? The Canadian minister? Uh, I don't know. No, these were not Can the Canadian. These were some two, okay. two, guy, two guys. Um, Another situation, some, uh, some black women, I think it was, were golfing. Um, they were golfing too slowly, and so the police were called. Um, in the US, there's reams of, of, of studies about how blacks and Latinos who are um, uh, trying to buy homes um, are offered homes on worse terms than white people who are, um, who have just as much wealth, who, are, who have, have just as much income and who have just as many assets. Um, uh, the, I, I, I don't think, um, I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's accurate to say that, 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 that wealth fully insulates people of color from, um, from racism. Um, I think it, it certainly is helpful in many respects. Um, but it's it's not um, it's not absent. We're okay. <laughs> um, Really, no further questions? No one? No? Okay, then um, thank you very much uh, for your time. And um, I think very insightful um, discussion. I think, as we have said, we haven't mentioned much um, the climate refugees and mm -hmm. the challenges this poses. Um, and I think this is something we all um, have to tackle or will have to tackle in the future years. Um, and I think the book is a great starting point and a necessary um, somehow uh, ground for further discussion and reimagining re how we live and um, where, do we, where do we put borders. Um, so, I very much hope that the ideas at the end um, of somehow finding ways how to uh, make the political subjects the carriers of destiny and not the borders as such um, somehow goes further. Thank you very much uh, for your time and the discussion. Do you have any uh, closing remarks or comments? I think you beautifully summed up oh. and then the, from the final <laughs> points in the chapter going forward. <laughs> so thank you very much for your time. Um, there, is, there are further discussions and lectures being held tomorrow and on Friday um, in the context of the conference that is taking place. So. Have a lovely evening and I hope fruitful discussions uh, in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you.